Hey cats, Ed Midsole Bud here. Today I've got a viewer requested video for you comparing Nike's two flagship race shoes up against one another. We've got the Vaporfly 3 versus the Alpha Fly 2. If you can buy one pair, which should you get? Let's get to it. Welcome one and all, Ed Midsole Bud here, back again with one of my classic comparison videos. This has been requested by the viewers, I've received far too many requests to not do it. The Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next% 3 versus the Nike Air Zoom Alphafly Next% 2. These are the two flagship race shoes that Nike has available right now right at the top of the tree, which is the best. I've run extensively in both of these shoes, so I've got some really good experiences to bring to you. Before we get into that though, help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and also giving this video a thumbs up like. You know it makes sense. Just a few things that really stand out between these two shoes. That Vaporfly Next% 3 comes in in my UK size 11, US size 12, about 48 grams lighter than the Alphafly Next% 2. That's about 1.8 ounces difference and it is quite noticeable on foot really. When you consider that both of these shoes are supposed to be marathon orientated models, you can already see that the Alphafly 2 isn't really going to be the most versatile. I can't really see anyone picking this up and wanting to run a very fast 5k in it it just doesn't have the same versatility as the Vaporfly. I mean yes you could use it for long distance training and such but it does minimize the actual use case of the shoe quite a bit and when you consider the 290 pound price tag well yeah I'll let you draw your own conclusions. The original well I found that to be superb pretty much at any pace quite different in the materials as well it feels like they've just wantonly added loads of weight to this shoe that didn't need to be there. I've no idea why they've taken that approach to it. I know so many people that prefer the Alpha Fly Next% Percent original. It certainly feels a lot more structured here in the upper compared to that original. That was very thin and kind of flexible. Here we've got some quite thick materials really. There's lots of added extras that I just don't feel are required. I do have to mention though that the Alpha Fly Next% Percent 2 fits a whole lot better in the toe box for me than the Vaporfly 3. You don't need huge tension in the laces to get a really good lockdown. In fact, you barely even need the laces at all. If you can shoehorn this one on, it isn't going anywhere. The Vaporfly 3 does feel quite sort of generous and cavernous really in the toe box area. I think the Alphafly 2 is a much better fitting shoe. Aside from the smashing heel area here in the Vaporfly 3, really comfortable though not sort of plush at all by any respect. I dislike overly tight and sort of present heel counters. It's very different in the Alphafly 2. That's very present around your foot, really. I even used to fold the collar over on that shoe just to get it away from my Achilles. It's very thick and padded, that one, and a bit of a sweat magnet. I think they got it right pretty much in the Vaporfly 3, so they just need a mishmash of the two shoes, really, for the ultimate upper. I don't think either of them are perfect. I do hope that they return to that vapor weave material we saw in the very first Vaporfly. That, for me, was a spot-on race upper. Minimum moisture absorption and that's very important if you live in the UK. It was a really light but containing fit and it's light here but it's not a containing fit in the toe box. I don't see anybody buying either of these shoes purely on the upper quality and the properties that it offers. They simply aren't as good as the previous versions. I'm sure some people will disagree with me in the comments and that's okay because that's what makes the world go round. So midsole wise, no matter how you try and measure the Alpha Fly versus the Vapor Fly, I still think there's a bit of extra height in the Alpha Fly. It's probably only a couple of millimeters, but there's definitely something else going on in that shoe. When you compare them up against each other, there's definitely some extra material there in the heel. I can say straight off the bat, I absolutely prefer the ride that's offered by the Vapor Fly 3 this time around. They have absolutely nerfed the Alpha Fly 2, if you ask me putting that extra material here under the air zoom pockets it just feels sort of cumbersome like they've kind of 
put a bicycle pump into it and inflated it. I just don't think that you've got the magic that you had of the original. Almost like there's too much squish now in the heel of the shoe and you don't have that awesome response that you had in the first version. Midsole wise, the Vaporfly 3 has grown on me over time. I wasn't bowled over by it on my initial review, but after running some half marathon races in it, it's getting better, I have to say. It's certainly super light, it's nimble, almost brittle to the point that it starts to disappear at certain paces the alpha fly 2 just simply doesn't do the same thing it might be great for you if you're after the super squash that you need at that sort of 20 mile point in a marathon race but it just feels a little bit bulky to me now versus this which is slimmed down to the bare minimum i can't see why I buy another pair of the alpha fly next percent 2 i just don't need another one i have no desire to have another pair of those in another colorway i think i'd much rather have another colorway of this shoe perhaps when there's a few more released there is less surface area in the midsole of the vapor fly next percent 3 certainly in the heel it feels it's it's been minimized to the point where you can't really take away any more i think if you need the stability yes the alpha fly is going to offer that otherwise i feel the vaporfly 3 does a perfectly good job of doing that without the need of that extra two centimeters of width in the heel yes there's two centimeters more width here in the heel of the alpha fly an interesting observation here if you look at this sort of section of the shoe where they've carved out some of the midsole there's almost 12 millimeters or 1.2 centimeters of foam missing there and for that you get an almost trampoline like effect which almost sort of amplifies that squash and compression that simply is not the case here in the vaporfly 3 they've kept it pretty flat it just feels a bit more stable for me and far less clunky so i think for pure speed efficiency of running and building a little bit more reliance on your own sort of muscles and strength i think the vaporfly 3 is a way better option to go for outsole wise i've seen quite a lot of wear here in the very rear of the alpha fly i've used it on a lot of training runs there are more miles into this shoe than the vaporfly 3 although i am nearing about 100 miles in that pretty soon the exposed foam always takes a pounding here so if that's something that bothers you don't buy a zumax shoe because it is going to happen who buys these things for looks anyway i'm sure there are some people out there but no one's going to wear this down tesco's are they i mean look a bit weird they're for a very specific purpose and we all know that that is for running in a straight line the forefoot grip i found in the alpha fly 2 and the vapor fly 3 is pretty much on point better at least than the vapor fly 1 and 2 though again i would suggest the alpha fly version 1 the original is that bit better i have found the alpha fly 2 of the two shoes the better overall in terms of traction this just seems to have a few more protrusions and lugs where it's actually quite smooth on the vaporfly 3 that original version of the alpha fly was just way more durable than any of these shoes just seems like they've changed things for the worse rather than the better you know companies do this it's simple they do it because they want you to buy the next version of the shoe they don't want a product that lasts you know like a thousand miles or something because you won't buy any more of them they need you to think that it's changed and it's improved I don't think it is this time in either of these shoes. I think it's changed for change's sake. Now in terms of pricing, these two are absolute wallet busters. £289 here in the UK for the Alpha Fly 2. And it's about £235 here in the UK for the Vaporfly 3. You can almost look at it as pounds per gram. Certainly for this shoe, it's not far off for this one either. Certainly in my size. I can't recommend the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 to you right now. Against the Vaporfly 3, I don't think it's a perfect shoe, but I do think it's the better of the two. I think it's slightly better value for money than this one right now. Try and pick up a pair of the original Alpha Flies though if you can, maybe over on StockX or something. If you really have to have, you know, one of these models, that's a better thing to do right now it's more propulsive it's got a better upper the weight's a little more on point the outsole's better just feels a little bit less clunky it actually feels like it's assisting you a little bit more than these two if you do want a superbly cushioned super shoe then i think the original version of the alpha fly is a much better option the current version of the vapor fly here the number three is growing on me over time though i still have some concerns about the durability of the rubber on the outsole and the useless upper sizing and fit is a bit of a concern it's more the height of the upper really i've no idea what last they've used but it's certainly different to the previous versions of the vapor fly it's a shame really because when you consider it's super light at about 230 grams and it could have been even less 
if they sorted out the shape and the amount of upper materials that we've got here. I have tried sizing down a half, but it's just too short in terms of length. So the Vaporfly, it's more versatile, it's cheaper, and the better of Nike's two super shoes right now. So what are your experiences in these two models? Let us know in the comments. Does one work for you better than the other? Do you agree with me that the Vaporfly 3 is the more versatile of the two super shoes at the moment? Let us know down in the comments. A very quick musical interlude for you. I've just watched a film that's on the BBC iPlayer over here in the UK, all about Little Richard. Really cool, actually. He does fill in a lot of gaps in my sort of knowledge about the artist. He's had some really big problems, actually, getting hold of some of the money that he was sort of duly owed by some of his recordings. And let's not even get into the sort of Pat Boone issue as well. But my top tip, if you want to check out some Little Richard material, is to go over to YouTube and actually check out some of his live video footage with the incredible band Sounds Incorporated. I believe they were from Liverpool. They provide the absolute top best backing that you can get for Little Richard. Just elevates him into this sort of mid 60s period. Absolutely unstoppable juggernaut sort of sound. Brass, guitar, bass and drums and of course Little Richard on the piano. At one point he's just pogoing on the stage, you know, way before anyone thought about doing that within a sort of punk environment. Little Richard with Sounds Incorporated, once you've seen this, it's probably one of the best live rock and roll bits of footage that you can see. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you enjoyed today's comparison. Please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. It really does help out. Or you can drop us a super thanks as well if you want to help support the channel on a more ad hoc basis. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.